The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Global Market Pulse with your host, John Logan. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, John Logan. Hi guys, welcome back to the show. I'm in Hong Kong today and uh, apologize for missing the last two shows. Been traveling, visiting some folks over here. Hope you guys have been doing well and uh, have a limited resource technical situation today so i'm operating from uh not as many screens as as i do back uh in the states and not in the office yet in the philippines so thanks for bearing with me ahead of time here so we're going to go right into gold and um as you know we've talked about this before the past couple of days about this pullback into 1201 was probably going to be you know support on this particular instrument why why is that the case because our daily profile um top of the box if you will is uh this particular area around this 1201 area if i go into our scanner i'm going to go into the future section really quick and i'm going to pull up gold and as you can see sitting right on this general area right on the top of our profile still green still that weekly breakout above that 1104 area 1105 is the <coughs> is the big big number that happened but uh, we use these daily profiles to guide this up i haven't been a huge fan of buying gold but i mean if you look at this and look at the consolidation that's happening around this unfair high around this, this 1201 and considering that the u.s stock market is just completely blown a gasket on the upside looks looks quite well i might say or i must say and as we look at this you know these these you know kind of breakouts and pullbacks these are these are the type of situations where you can get another move up so we're looking at that now from a little bit of a positive standpoint as we look at the situation on the 240s here's what we have the same general area the same confluence around this particular unfair low on the 240s been kind of sitting here spinning 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 looks like we might have another little launch in order on gold and if you if you guys are making comments in the den today, I, 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 again I have limited resources and not going to be able to exactly look at the den constantly. So I'll look at it on the breaks, and uh, we'll try to accommodate any type of requests that happen in that venue. So as we kind of look across a lot of the usual suspects here, we're going to hit the treasuries really quick, and I want to just kind of point this out again, looking at our profiles, looking at the scanner. Noticing some of the information here as I go down to the 10 year, we're going to see, you know, we're, you know, kind of just spinning around here after those breakouts. And if we look at this bottom of our profile, we hit that pretty much to the tick yesterday. The low was 130.06. The bottom of that profile is 130.04.05. Um, again, you know, the U.S. stock market, again, has is, is just completely launched itself. And I'm looking at this now in the notes as, as a relatively supportive area. If we get any type of downturn in the market now, we could see a little bit of a bounce in, in the 10-year. That's the way I'm looking at that. Just kind of trying to put things together for you before the market opens here and on the first segment, obviously, of this show. Here's the situation on the S&Ps. And I'm going to go into the scanner. And I'm going to pull up into the TAS profile scanner. I'm going to notice we're still a little mixed up here on the weekly and daily, but we got some... Some really good signs on the 60 minute for you guys who are doing the day trading scene on the on the S&P futures. Remember that, you know, we look at these crossovers on a short term basis, put a lot of weight into this, starting to kind of gravitate a little in the getting weaker state right now. But uh, again, that crossover happened on 212 is 218 right now. It's been a very good barometer to look at trading the S&Ps. And I got to check to see if you guys are still seeing the charts here. Are we okay? Just making sure. Sometimes when I flip around on one screen, it. Okay, good. All right. So the S and P's uh, hit the top of our profile 
at 80, 1898 and, you know, backed off a little bit, but then we launched forward again. Now we've got to look at that since we had a daily close above, we've had a pretty good break in trend here on the way down uh, on the intermediate. We've got to look at that now around, around 1900, that general neighborhood as support. What's up here? Uh, not a lot to hang on to or trade off of after that breakout on the S&Ps on the daily. Here's the 240 situation, and this is what you can pay attention to now. With 1931.50, top of the profile, we reached high of 1933. So short-term support at 1911.50, that's your targets for short-term short trading opportunities to explore that fair auction. Remember, we had a uh, a, a yellow peel back in the scanner on that particular time frame, and hence new box appeared. Traditionally, we will explore those fair auctions. So 1911.50 on the on the bottom side of that, and that coincides. Excuse me, 1911.50. Here's our weekly. Here's the top of the. Excuse me. Here's the POC on this weekly profile. So you've got 1918 there. You've got 1933. 3150 up top and 1911.50 down down below. Those are the big inflection points, but I'm not putting a lot of weight in that POC on the weekly. I'm just paying attention to those numbers on the 240 and understanding that we've got really big support now on the S&Ps around 1900. Now, still a little bit of a mixed bag on the breath situation. The weekly hasn't exactly rolled over, but we've got this yellow indication here. Tomorrow's Friday. And what does that mean? That means a lot of these stocks with the new box attempting to appear below are going to convert over to the, at least the middle ground. And that's going to cause a little bit of a breath change possibly. So again, everything's lining up now. I've been not as bearish as a lot of folks out there on the S&Ps. We're looking for a move like this. And now if you can get that breath to kind of change over in the weekly, the daily stays positive. You've got a decent support area around 1900 neighborhood for this particular product. I'm gonna go into the den, see what, see what we have here. Okay, here we go. No questions. Everybody is completely satisfied and on the same page. We're gonna take a look at the dollar. And you know, it's nice to be back in Hong Kong. There's a, uh, if you wanna look this up, there's a facility that I've got a small office in called uh, the Cyberport. It's uh, if you look it up online, you look up Cyberport. It's on the and eh, towards the west end of the island, on uh, Hong Kong's main island. Um, if you look, if you're looking at Central from the water, you go to the right, over to the west side. It's uh, it's looking out on the. <laughs> it's nighttime here right now, so you're not going to see anything. But I'll take some snapshots for you guys and show them tomorrow. It's an incredible facility. It's mainly for startups, but uh, IBM, Lenovo. Uh, a couple other big companies are in there. It's, it's a it's a cool spot to be, and I'm happy to be there. All right. So as we go into our break, we're going to come back. We're going to take a look at the oil sector, look at crude oil, take a look at a couple of stocks that we might want to play around with, ExxonMobil being one of them. We'll be right back, guys. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS as proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. 
Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. John takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. I was looking at uh, just some custom sorts earlier today and, and looking at, some, you know, when we have a market that's just, you know the horses out of the barn on the upside like like it's been happening since we actually did this show before last friday um you know you want to try to find things that are showing yourself we talk about that all the time and you know what's showing yourself not wanting to cooperate with these types of moves straight north we're going to look at the utilities based on that by the way and how that's kind of been a kind of a rotation type thing but uh i looked at facebook here's our daily you know, obviously, this stock is is not been one to be shy on the on the on the long side here. Let me see if I can get my chart to come up here. Well, okay, here we go. Here's a weekly. Obviously, not the weakest stock in the world, but you know, you you're coming up into some areas to to pick battles on, namely this 105.91. Uh, again, this is not the weakest stock in the world. But what I did is I did a, a sort to to find these, just trying to find neutral. Stocks that are still in the balanced area on the weekly, but but just kind of coming up into the bottom of a profile on our daily. Facebook popped up. Monsanto, again, just looking for trading opportunities, possibly. This one looks a, a little bit more riper, M-O-N. Let's just pick this out. And I'm on a weird connection here, so it's not popping up immediately. Let's go back to it again. Okay, so, you know, new profile here. Here's our weekly. Um, again, you know, not the best trade on the books, but again, a profile appearing above price action. You've got a little bit of a fence to lean on 89.20 right there. Has kind of moved up into an inflection point. Again, not the best trade in the world. Let's take a look at Southern Company. Uh, again, just kind of sitting around some dual inflection points here, 48.54. These are trading opportunities at, at best. We're just trying to, and again, I, I can do a much better sort here. I'm going to find things that are, that was a little bit more of a risky trade to kind of pick out. I'm going to go into and look at uh, stocks that are still trading below profiles and also just sitting at the floor on a daily. Now, these are these are stocks that have problems. Um, let's just take a look at uh, L Brands here. Sorry, my charts are not popping up immediately here. Yeah, no mystery here. I mean, this is... This is as ugly as you can find on a on a market like this. So, you know, 
before we did a sort, just trying to find some things that were a little bit more risky type of environment to, to trade on. These are things that really look at the cell breakdowns when you do a sort like this. I mean, this is, ouch, Devon Energy Corp. Yeah, I mean, a lot of guys might think something like this is on sale, but um, in a market like this, it, they have really, really shown their self. And guess what else is sitting there? Goldman Sachs. So we've rallied back up into a daily inflection point. I mean, we could actually go into 160.13 and still be in a defined downtrend here, but you've got a really cool situation. You've got some unfair lows on the weekly. And again, you're seeing blue there. There's a green line right below it. 155.02, but you've also got a stake in the ground here at 151.38. So you, in my opinion, you've got two chances to look at whacking Goldman Sachs again. It's it's been a you know stock on everybody's radar screen on the short side, but right now you're just kind of coming up into inflection points again. Um, RHI, again, these are extremely sick-looking situations here. Uh, I could choose top here. These are ones that have been in a, a downtrend, uh, stayed below profiles in the weekly, but are, are sitting in, coming up into like Enscope PLC, um, Marathon Petroleum, um, these are ones, you know, in the XLE sector, crude oil. I personally think crude oil is going to go higher. And these are stocks that are basically, if you can see this, are just, you know, trailing up into inflection points up top. And now, are, you know, do they have a chance? Here's a weekly situation. God, why is this so slow today? Ooh. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's look at this stock in e signal because I'm having some connection issues. So we'll see if it's. Let's see. Let's try it one more time here. Yeah, here we go. So, Marathon Petroleum, obviously not been the darling of the, uh, the energy sector. But again, you're coming up into profiles there. And you can look at this two ways. You could say, you know what? This, is, this could possibly squeeze some people if we get above this profile. And there's a hole in the marketplace here that's pretty significant. And we could travel pretty quickly up into 41.29. But, you know, again, you've got a bounce in crude oil. You've got a weaker stock in crude oil looking at the long term. And you've got an inflection point to lean on on the short side of this. So if you're doing any pairs trading, you know, this might be a pairs trading being, well, a lot of times pairs trading means re mean reversion type stuff in the sector. But if you're looking at stocks that are weak to sell and, and strong to buy, this might be one weak to sell in the energy sector, and you've got stronger opportunities to buy um, in that particular sector. So, again, I, I was looking at also doing some some of the custom sorts. I was looking at uptrend reversals. What what has been in an uptrend is reversing down by our definition here. Guess what? Nothing. <laughs> there's there's no stocks out of the S&P 500 that are meeting that criteria right now. Uh, breakdowns, there's one. CERN. Oof. No. Don't have to tell you that one. I was obviously got some news related to it. But again, you know, a lot of these stocks in the S&P now are, are really getting some, uh, some legs. And a lot of these sorts that start showing... Or, or start displaying to us some weak opportunities are just not there. So uh, let's take a look at, I want to look at crude oil really quick. And let me find it here. Here we go. All right, so I actually did a Bloomberg brief on crude oil that was that's released today. Um, crude oil. Again, Outlook, you know, if you've been watching this show, we've been looking to try to catch a bid on this. Crude oil boat, Outlook bodes well for a turnaround in Brazil and Colombia. There's me, there's there's Juan out of South America. Um, and, and again, I'll, I'll try to get this in the den. It should be out today. And it talks about crude oil and then the Bovespa and, and the uh, coal cap index out of Colombia and, and you know, kind of where the, the major breakout inflection points are. But uh, that being said, we want to look at crude oil, and the, the situation we've been talking about was that XLE situation and how that had made higher higher lows and, and kind of leaned off those weekly inflection points around 52 and some change. And crude oil sitting here 
I, I love how this kind of got back in here, retested, and now it's gone high. It looks like it's going to go higher. So 3482 are your immediate targets on, on the March contract. Let me check the den really quick here. <laughs> and we haven't, the thing that's a little concerning to me on crude is we haven't had a weekly new profile attempt to appear. So when I go into the scanner and I look at my future section, and we're going to look at this right after our next break, guys. But as I look at the crude oil sector, I really want to see a new stake in the ground as far as a peelback happening on the weekly. That's not there. That's concerning. We're going to talk about this a little bit further when we come back, guys. trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to tom o'brien's daily market letter market insights tom o'brien's daily newsletter market insights comes out every market day at around 9 30 a.m and provides tom's daily commentary on the broad market including the dow nasdaq and s p plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. Um, we're just finishing up with crude oil here. Here's the 240s as we started getting that momentum up and we started, you know, again, using these as kind of the regulator of the trade up, especially on the short term. Um, but, you know, just the, the only thing that's really weird, you know, about this thing really, really putting a stake in the ground and saying, you know what, this is the bottom. Um, Okay, got some programmers looking at something right now. Uh, don't see any yellow <clears throat> peelbacks happening in the long term on the scanner. 
um, on the long-term weekly. If you look at this and you just kind of ignore hunches and all kinds of other things going on and fundamental news that some of these guys in uh, <clears throat> OPEC are going to slow down production, you look at this technically, you know, the con thing that's concerning is the long-term really hasn't exactly cooperated. And uh, all we've done really is kind of use the, the most recent daily profile, which has edged up. If you look at this, this is, this is a higher low and a higher high. And we've kind of got back in the balance area. So I'm really looking at this 2926 as the stake in the ground to lean on. And uh, having a retracement of 3482, I think, is in order here. So that's the way I'm looking at it. But that long term, again, you know, just uh, I'm not exactly thrilled about that. Let me go into the scanner here. My email is. Somebody say my email is open in the scanner. I mean, excuse me, in the den. Um, I, I don't, I mean, I'm, I'm not showing it, but may, maybe that's the case. But you guys can read my emails anyway. <laughs> um, Al, am I showing, are we showing, just doing a technical check, are we showing my emails in the, uh, or is that just, okay. Okay, yeah, well, thanks, thanks for that. I appreciate it, JB. I tell you what, <clears throat> yeah, I've got one screen here, so I'm having to kind of flip around. And uh, again, that's, yeah, that's that's the situation I'm in today, guys. So I apologize. Um, so let's let's just get on the list. Let's look at MCD first, McDonald's. Um, you know, I want to pull this up in the scanner. You guys were probably seeing this on the break. McDonald's is showing top 54 there, era ups. That what does that mean? That means that we've been in a defined uptrend with that arrow up, but we're at the top of a profile and still sitting within the, the balanced area, but right in that neighborhood up top. That means we've kind of been in a little bit of a downtrend for eight bars on the daily. But uh, let's just, I, I love it when we get to these long-term inflection points. So let's take a look at this. Man, I'm having problems pulling my charts up in the scanner. Here we go. So here's the daily, here's the weekly. And as you notice, we explored the entire fair auction twice. There's the bottom of the profile met, bottom of the profile met. We're coming up in the top of the profile. I like this reversal action here a lot. And this means to me, this is a little bit of a scarier trade. But this means to me that leaning against 119.17 on the short side for a little bit of a trade down, maybe graveling a couple of points because, you know, the S&Ps might be considered overextended a little bit here. They might need to come back to 1900 as we talked about for a retest of those daily unfair highs. Remember, that's a 30 point downturn from, I think we're at right. Let me just check this. Let me check the SPs. Just to get up. There we go. Yeah, I thought, yeah, 1930 general neighborhood we're at right now. Um, Considering that the market may need to come back and retest 1900, you know, a lot of these stocks like the McDonald's of the world, again, a scarier trade, you know, may use those weekly unfair highs to kind of uh, use as a fence for a little bit. You know, it's a target at bare minimum um, for the longs. But I'll, I like how that a couple of weeks ago, you know, we had kind of done that key reversal, break out above and then come back and, and just close back in the balance area and head lower. Um, I like McDonald's to lean on the short side for that, for a trading opportunity. Again, you've got better shorts out there probably, but put a gun to my head. You've got, uh, got a little bit of a, I'd rather be short that than long on the short term. Let's see where our clock's at. Okay, here we go. All righty. Okay. GBX. That's the next one we're going to look at. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Let's get through the uh, GBX and then N bleh. GBX and then NLY. And again, I apologize if you're joining us late. I've got limited real estate today. I'm on the road in Hong Kong. I'm not on the road in Hong Kong, but. I'm on the road in general. Okay, so GBX, let's take a look at it. All right. Now, I'm looking at this, you know, just general technical analysis. 
generalities. So I'll say that. Okay, so let, let me let me go into the scanner. Let me see if we have this in the scanner. GBX. No, nope. don't think we have it. All right, so reset that. Okay. All right, so we we've kind of wrapped. You know, I've obviously been in a downtrend. With the, you know, this is our weekly. And when I look at a weekly like this, and I just not looking at anything else right now, just looking at the long term and just gazing at two different things I look at, Navigator and these, these profiles, I like to keep it relatively simple, try to keep it black and white, try to block out one side of the marketplace always. When we come up into these inflection points, if we sit here and compress and rattle around on, on these, I know the market's gone up the past week and this thing's not acted that well, but this general action, um, you want to see these things get away from inflection points. And with the market uh, doing what it's doing, and this, you know, stock generally, no matter what the market's done lately, going down or going up, just kind of rattling around above these daily profiles and compressing up into the weekly. Um, I'm not looking at this so much as a short opportunity. It hasn't really shown itself um, lately because it hasn't gone down with the market going down, hasn't gone up. But to me, it looks like we could get a leg up and possibly, you know, entirely explore 30, up into 33. So GBX, I'm not looking at it. Again, it's been a stock that's been down, but I'm looking at this as, you know what, we're kind of looking launching pad-ish here. Um, we've gotten above profiles on the daily. I like how it's poked its head up, and, and I like how it's consolidating around these weekly unfair lows to possibly explore up into 33. Jay, don't quit the day job. I'm just kidding. Here we go. NLY. I wish I could quit my day job. NLY. All right. So, this is an interesting little situation here. Okay. So, 965, obviously that unfair high on the weekly. Just considering that we closed above, rattled around, and now we're kind of starting to move forward. And, and I love how it acted the past couple of weeks when the market was kind of considerably having issues. Here's the daily. We're going to take a look at this a little bit deeper. It's a great example uh, when we come back, folks. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that 
many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up to the date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under trading newsletters. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi, guys. Um, was just kind of finishing up with NLY. Um, 99.81 that daily and for how that's going to be looked at as support now again things on their highs can go higher and you've even got bigger support down to 965 so you got a nice little dmz there 965 981 not a bad situation i like the action on it and uh where's your targets up top i would again you know you're just gonna have to let the uh 240s kind of regulate this thing up i mean here's the 240s kind of like a trailing stop if you will and uh, again, big support down at 965, uh, 955, 981. I mean, these are kind of, this is kind of a collection area, in my opinion, for this particular stock. But I, again, I'd rather be long it than short it, put it that way. Uh, we're going to look at a couple of currencies really quick. We haven't talked about those in a while. And uh, we're going to look at the euro here really quick. And this is one where we were kind of pounding the desk, if you will. I don't know if you guys can see this. God, these charts are... Uh, I haven't been a big fan of being long the euro, and I've been a big fan of shorting around 109. That's been a nerve-wracking, pain-in-the-butt situation, and then we just kind of completely got stopped out there. But then, you know, you always have to be willing to, you know, sell, sell breakdowns lower... But also, it's really cool when we kind of come up into another resistance point, namely this 113.50 general area, and we backed off pretty well here. So, um, let's see if I can get these to come up here. Well, you know what? I'm getting ready to give up on these charts. I think it's my connection here. But uh, we're going to go into the euro. Let me do this. Let me start another server here. It's our currency server. And we're going to take a look at the euro. So here's that weekly unfair high, getting better charts here, e signal in place. And we backed off what about 250 pips. And what do you do with this now? So again, here's the here's the initial targets. We're getting very close to them. Remember, at the same time we hit that weekly on fair high, we got that daily new supply kind of indication. And a lot of times these are explored. So your targets on the short side are 110.45. I'm not a big fan of buying the euro ever. So this is, again, just a chance to take some weight off. And uh, that's the way I'm looking at it. All right, we're going to look at the Aussie dollar. And, you know, this, we're going to look at our long-term weekly on this. I'm assuming we're seeing our charts, hopefully. Let me make sure. Dang on it, we're not. Sorry, guys. Let me redo this. <laughs> How about now? I'm 
let me adjust this. I think on it. Okay. Limited real estate today, guys. Are we good? Al? Okay, cool. All right, so that's the Aussie dollar. Let me go back and, and let me let you see the euro here. Um, this is the euro situation. That's the Aussie dollar again. Why am I doing that? Here's the euro. All right, so yeah, there's that unfair how in the week we were talking about 113.52. And here's the daily. Uh, these are your targets. So you can see 110.45. 11046 down here, getting very, very close. And again, not a big fan of buying the euro, just to repeat myself. And uh, I, I'm, I'm just looking at it as taking some weight off there, off the short from 113.50. We're going to take a look at the Aussie dollar really quick, finally. Here's the long term. And, you know, I was a big fan. It was showing itself, showing itself, leveraging off this 71.69 area for a long time. Isn't it wild how long this profile has been in force? This is, uh, as Tom would say, this is a trip. This is, I've never seen it. Let's see, how, how long has this thing been in force? September 2015, this profile, this long-term profile has been in force since then. Um, you know, what do you do with the Aussie dollar? I'm not a big fan of selling this. I know these commodities, uh, CRB index, blah, 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 that kind of jazz. China, crude oil, metals, you know, I mean, I'm not a big fan of selling the Aussie dollar. I'd like to see a weekly close above 71.69 again, and I'd like to try to use that to leverage on the long side. Have you had some opportunities here on the daily? You know, without question, you've had a little bit lower opportunity here to trade off this, as you can see. But again, I'd love to see that weekly close above 71.69 and then start using that even more so to go along the Aussie dollar. Um, we're going to take a look at the Canadian really quick. Now, this is something, you know, we talked about the possibility of crude oil rallying. And obviously this is, you know, probably an inverse relationship for the most part right now. Um, when it comes to the Canadian dollar becoming devalued as crude oil continues to head lower. And then those, those hints that were already kind of showing with the ruble and the Canadian dollar starting to show some strength. Now, this is when I say strength, this is the devaluation of the Canadian dollar means you know this is going up with this particular pair. Um, but uh, you know, we talked about not exactly being a huge fan of buying these unfair lows here with the possibility of crude oil um, turning around. Now that now this, in my opinion, these unfair lows, 137.59, have to be looked at as resistance, especially. If we get a, a close tomorrow, as you can see, you know, again, yellow profile, new attempting, new attempting, God, I cannot speak, new profile attempting to appear. When this happens, it happens. You at least, a lot of times, will go explore the fair auction, caught that, that is your targets, crude oil setting up for going long. This thing, to me, looks like it could continue to head in the same direction again with that close below 137.59 on the weekly. I'm hearing voices again. I think there's somebody outside. <laughs> I hope there is. Anyway, uh, we're going to move away from some of these currencies. I could hit the ruble here. Um, again, um, you know, crude oil dependent, hopes and dreams. Got the new profile again. I think you could easily get back down to 69 on this particular cross. Let's see here. Then, then, then. Here we go. All right. See how much time we got in this segment. All right. Flipping around with one screen is awful for you guys, and I apologize. All right. So we were looking at the scanner before. We are doing a couple little kind of manual sorts and then looking at some custom sorts. But what I want to do is I want to go back to the uh, the ETF sector and I want to look at this. It's time we have, can we get five seconds? All right, and we're going to look at some of the, when we come back, it's kind of a rotation situation, obviously, that happened in the uh, XLU. Remember this little sector was over here, bright green, now it's 
the only red on the board when it comes to dailies. And um, I hear the music. We'll be right back, guys. O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under Trading Newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Larry Pesavento, a 40-year veteran trader. He uses pattern recognition, Gartley's, Butterflies, ABC's, and Fibonacci in order to trade these markets. Trade what you see next on TFNN. Uh, showing our scanner right now, looking at the ETF sectors ranked on our intermediate daily time frame. I want to say a couple of things here. If you'll notice the financials put a massive stake in the ground. See that big yellow area? You know, considering this is still negative, this is pretty serious. I mean, 52% of the stocks in this XLS sector have put a kind of an idea or a hint that they're going to have a new demand area happening on the weeklies. Um, that's going to kind of, kind of a big deal there. But I'll tell you what, we're going to kind of take a look at the relationship, financials, the thirst for yield, if you will, these utilities that pay a dividend that's more than likely above <laughs> the treasury rate, which is uh, unbelievable, um, and kind of try to bring this together. So let me let me get my charts up here, and I want to mention two, three things here. So, so this is the weekly situation on the ten year. If I can get it up. All right, no new profiles attempting to appeal, no new yellow peelbacks, but I want you to notice on the daily, 
when that happened and you see that in the scanner you got the new profile here here's the unfair low we hit it pretty much to the tick we talked about that and um you know as we look at this this is going to act as support for a while the s p's we talked about possibly being a little bit overextended need to pull needed needing to pull back about 30 points in my opinion on a dow relative scale we're looking at above 250 points on that but you know what does that mean for the utility so as i go into the xlu this thirst for yield situation we're talking about a trading opportunity here um you know the xlu never really put that stake in the ground even though we're kind of the seller dweller when it comes to breath never put the stake in the ground on the weekly we found some support at 45 14 remember there's that yellow bar and there's that ex entire fair auction being explored on the daily and with the 10 years seemingly having some support the s p is a little bit overextended the utilities remember the thirst for yield situation not so sure that uh, we, we we're not going to go back and retest 46.83. So some of these stocks in the XLU, when we drill into it, we want to obviously we've got a lot of yellow peelbacks happening on the on the weeklies there. Let's just go and find a pure monster long situation here. Let's look at AGL Resources. You know, again, um, been up for 55 bars. I tell you what, I'm getting ready to jump out of window here. Why are these charts not coming up when I hit them? Okay, here we go. So looking at uh, GAS, AGL resources. Is that right? Yes, sorry. Okay, so here's the daily found support here, 6408, unfair high 6479. Here's our weekly, obviously trading above profiles. I mean, these are the type of stocks that might get, a, you know, might get some decent legs here. I know they're kind of over, they're not overextended, but they they've shown their self. They're above profiles, and they're uh, in this, you know, XOU sector. Considering S and P's possibly turning around, notes sitting on support. Um, you know, all things considered, Tico Energy. And I apologize, guys, we're having problems with our charts today. Let me see what kind of time we have left. Yeah, about 20 seconds. So let's look at Tico in our E signal T E. And if you guys are seeing this, here's our weekly. Here's our daily. Got that support 2711. I think we're out of time. Guys, you've been great. I'll be back again tomorrow. Pick up Larry next on TFNN. We'll be back with you tomorrow, guys. Thank you. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.